Hi everyone! In this tutorial you're going to learn how to take a free hierarchy character and characterize it for use in iClone 5. First, you'll want to make sure that you've prepared a model with skinned bones. In this example, I'm using 3ds Max Character Studio and a little cartoon pig from 3D Universe, which you can find in the content store. It's important first to make sure that your mesh includes skinned data. You might want to open up your schematic view as well to ensure that the bone structure is a united hierarchy without any mesh linkage. Once you've confirmed that's all OK, select everything and then choose Export Selected. You'll want to choose a file name and export everything in FBX format. It's important that your FBX export version is 2012. Once you've confirmed all your settings, finish the export and then enter into 3D Exchange. In 3D Exchange, the first thing you'll want to do is import in your character. You can also check the size comparison with standard iClone characters by clicking the little yellow reference image at the top. You'll also want to ensure that your model is standing on the horizontal plane before you go about converting it. Be sure that you don't use the align panel before converting the character as well. I'm going to convert my model to a non-standard character first and you'll see the bones appear immediately inside my model. The next step is to map all the bones individually. I normally start with the pelvis, so what I'm going to do first is select that on my reference image to the right, and then choose the corresponding bone on my model. After that, you can continue on to the legs. Sometimes your character will have an extra bone section like the feet of this character and sometimes they'll have less bones than the 3D Exchange template, such as this character who only has a single bone for its spine. You'll need to map at least 15 bones in order to get a good result when converting to a non-standard character in iClone. If your character has hand bones, you should also go in to map those as well. You can click the down arrow on your reference image to open up the hand bone map and individually rig those as well. You'll need to follow the process of individually mapping the bones unless your character comes with a standard DAS Genesis, 3ds Max, or Maya rig. Once you've mapped sufficient bones, the red light above your reference image will turn to green, and you can check the active box. Sometimes your character's T-pose may need slight adjusting as well, so you may want to adjust the hip and feet offset slightly like I'm doing here. You can adjust the parameters until your character displays the ideal posture. You can also go into the floor contact tab and set that as well. Normally you won't want your knees to be bent or anything, so make sure that they're contacting the floor, just enough to touch but not enough to bend the knees. If your feet make contact, the rest of your body will react via human IK to bend at the knees. Once that's all set up, you can go into your motions and preview them one by one to check the results. You can see that with these motions, my pig arms are entering into his body mesh, as he's a little large around the waist. We can adjust this by going back to the T-pose and raising the arms out further from the body. I'm going to rotate the upper arm bones to raise the arms a bit here. Keep in mind though that even though your arms have been raised, you'll still want to keep your palms facing downward, parallel to the floor. You can do that by adjusting the wrist bones. Now you can see when I preview that the results look much better. The last thing you'll want to do is to click Convert to convert it to an iClone non-standard character, which means that you can now apply any motion from the huge library included with iClone, as well as use Body Puppet Motion and all the other powerful motion tools in iClone. After you've converted, just export your character to the iClone content folder or your desired folder in iClone and you're set.